Hello and welcome to my first ever map review. Today we're going to be looking at Eggside Line, which is one of my favourite maps in the game. Did I? I actually said Eggside Line, didn't I? God damn it! Sixth Line, which is one of my favourite maps in the game. I think it's really well balanced. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the standard game mode, the encounter, and the assault. And I'm going to be telling you how you can best use handle yourself on the map, no matter what type of tank you're in, no matter what class, what ability, what armor, we can find something for you to do. So, let's have a look. Alright, so here we have Eggspired Line. Now, this map, the combat is heavily city-based. On this map, the most important area is undoubtedly the town. The removal in a recent patch of the elevations in land here, and the increase in the elevation of this land to give you a bit of cover behind the hunch line here only changed the gameplay features in minor ways and there weren't really any big changes in the town there was a bush that was removed here but there wasn't anything drastically changing gameplay but it didn't do much to change anything the field position here is maybe more feasible than it was last patch but it is still quite an obsolete area in the majority of situations. All of the combat, all of the important combat, most of the time, 90% of the time, is going to take place in the town. And the combat will go quickly once tanks start dying. As soon as a tank starts dying, as soon as a team starts feeling like they've got an advantage, then the game is going to progress very very quickly indeed that's how basically how Eggfront Line works on the standard game mode so let's look at how you can handle this map in every single class of vehicle we'll start off with light tanks now light tanks in general are not designed to be doing their thing at the start of the game sure you can pass as scout but to be honest there's no real fantastic positions to scout on this map if you're in a light tank. In the standard game mode you have one base down in the south, one base up in the north, and you have a position here, this bush on the edge can allow you to get some vision out on the rest of the field while staying relatively safe. If you want to make more of an aggressive spot or play early, you can come down here up to the door, the front door, and uh, just poke over the lunch line here, but you best be prepared to fall back behind that lunch line in the event that you are spotted. Now, one thing I don't recommend in the light tank, despite wargaming increasing or making this lunch line along here more prominent, I do not recommend going there in a light tank because it's so easily countered and you don't achieve much there at, at all. The problem with this position is not so much that um, you can't do a lot from there, it's the fact that you're committing so much. If you, oh dear, if you go there, you can't fall back without getting shot, without losing health. If you decide, I don't want to be there, you don't have a choice, you have to stay there, you know, you can't just fall back in the middle of the field because there's tanks here, there's tanks here. So you're committing so much and as soon as you get there, as soon as you get stuck there, you've thrown away all the advantages of a light tank, mobility, uh, camera glitching at range, it's just, it's a terrible position for a light tank. If you do want to make your way around the west side of this map from the field, then you need to keep going and hopefully be in a platoon or be sure that you've got fire support and keep going up to the corners of the map to get into some secure positions behind the enemy rather than just staying in the middle and getting locked down. Alright, with regards to the town fight, light tanks shouldn't get involved in it because what happens on their crowd line is that I've often seen light tanks trying to make their way all the way down the north line, trying to work their way in behind the enemy and, and maybe get that arty. It doesn't work. It never, never works, and the reason for that is because in this kind of 400 meter by 400 meter area, in the
in the top right corner of the map, let's assume you're attacking from the southern base up, and up the north line, you will have about 13 to 14 enemy tanks in this one 400 meter by 400 meter area. And that's why Sigfrid Line is so difficult to attack on in a light, in a medium, because the enemy team is so compact. There are tanks positioned here, 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 and there are TDs on the hill at the back here. They'll have their RT positioned way at the back behind all of their forces. There, there is no hole. You know, there's very little opportunity to exploit a gap in the defense in the early to middle stages of the game. You have to wait until the end of the game where you can use these Nanana City passes as rather than an obstacle, you can use them to make your ambush instead of running into the enemies. So wait, keep your tank alive for as long as you can before you see an opportunity. Patience is going to get you very, very far in a light tank on the sixth line. You've got to wait until the latter stages of the game when the enemy... Two, th two things can happen. Your team can either push and start to kill all the guys here, in which case you can flank it around. At that point, you can work your way up the north line, take out their RT, get to these hills. When it's a bit clearer, you know, when the enemy team's distracted. Or, the enemy team can push through the town into this area. Now, this area here is your playground. And it's the same thing on the other side too. There is foliage for you to hide behind, there's elevations in land, and there's not any cover for heavy tanks. When they move into here, they're coming out of an engagement that they like, with lots of cover to fall back and reload their guns. They're coming out of that situation into your playing field. So if you can lure them into that area, you can use your mobility, you can get on all sides of them, you can use punch lines. It is much better to lure the enemy team into a place where your tank is comfortable and your tank performs well than moving in to attack them. So wait. In light tanks, wait. Patience until the latter stages of the game. Okay, mediums. Now, mediums in general are a hard class to put your finger on. I can't just say, mediums do this, mediums do that, because they are among the most versatile tanks in the game. You have tanks like the E-50 with 150mm of front one and incredibly accurate 105 cannon. That tank performs very differently to something like an AMX-30, for example, that, that has no armor whatsoever, and good gun depression, good versatility, amazing mobility. So, mediums are hard class to account judge to talk about. You have to have a certain amount of skill and analyze your tank yourself to find out whether it, it's going to play more like a heavy or a medium. I mean, you have tanks like the IS-8 that are heavies but play like medium. Mediums are among... They're considered the same way. And so if you've got something like an E-50 or maybe a T-54, then you can hang about in this position, but do not, I would not recommend this area, because this area is for the massive heavies, you know, E100, E75, F215Bs, mouses, they're all going to be side scraping at this corner, there's going to be Yapans waiting down there at this corner for you to poke out there, you do not want to be in this area where it's all close quarters, you want to try and use the advantages that your medium tank status gives you, which is hopefully more mobility than the enemy. So stick to opened out areas where you can get the ambush off. You can potentially, as long as you know that there's no TDs on this hill, you can move into this area, sneak through this tiny little hole here. Or you can do that from the north spawn or the south spawn and it can allow you to close your distance to your enemy without taking a lot of damage. Now, mediums can do that, but Again, it's the fact that the enemy team are so compact and they're always within firing lines of each other, they're always supporting each other, that makes it very difficult for a medium tank to excel in the beginning of the game. Now, that said, as I said, the compact area of enemy forces will be on the top right and uh, bottom right 
of the screen depending on north and south spawns. So mediums have the potential to work the field very well. However, from the north spawn, when mediums work their way out onto the field and they get to here, there is a position that the southern team get for which the northern team don't have an equivalent. And it's this bush, sack right here. If you can hop into that bush, you can put continuous fire into the medium tanks that poke on this punch line without any fear. You can fall back behind the cover to shoot, and you can stay stealth from that position while opening up most of the time. And the northern team do not have a position like that to counter people rushing from the south, which maybe gives them a bit of an advantage. As I said, this position feels increasingly obsolete in the map. And the reason for that, I think, is because unless you have a high tier platoon, if you have a top tier medium tank platoon on 6 point line, I recommend pushing the entire line. If you've got T-54s, E-50s and an Amex 30, push the entire line all the way to here and work your way in behind. Do not stop there, you're wasting your time. And remember what I th said about the town engagement. Once tanks start dying in the town, you better hang your little ass up because that engagement is gonna go from 0 to 100 in no time at all. Because as soon as one team feels like they've got an advantage, they're gonna be in there. There's, there's no distance, there's 100 meters to close to the enemy team before you can start putting, putting the gun to work, you know. That engagement is gonna end. And so you cannot waste any time in a medium if you want to make a maneuver around the west. You have to do it quickly and get in behind, start putting fire into the flanks of your enemies before they start pushing into the depths of the town and drawing you into their engagement. Now, once you've cleared the field on the enemy team, whether you're clearing the south or the north, you can start working. The southern or the northern team can start working in the middle, but only once they know that the field is clear. Now, you only want to really do this in a tank with good gun depression, because it will allow you to work various positions in the town, and it's a good way of accessing... There's a range line, there's a range line that runs, splits the middle of this map, it splits the town engagement from the field engagement, and the middle here, for either team, is probably the best and safest way to access the town on a standard game mode without having to go over this lunch line and exposing yourself to lots of guns. There is plenty of cover for you to use in this position to start attacking the enemy team. Now, mediums in the latter stages of the game can be extremely deadly by accessing the flanks, by going around using their gun depression on these lunch lines. If uh, a medium tank platoon or even a solo top tier medium tank can get onto this hill and clear out the enemy tank destroyers then they can start working their way around these fields keeping the high ground above their opponents and putting constant fire into the back of them while their heavy tanks push and that's what I feel like mediums should constantly be trying to do make an aggressive manoeuvre on the field but defensively in the town so it's defensive for mediums in the town until the latter stages of the game, aggressive on the field or not in the field at all. If you're if you're going to the field, go go all the way, go all the way with a platoon. I would only recommend doing it with a high tier platoon, unless you can see that you are perfectly able to do that. You are top tier T54 or some such tank like that. Now heavy tanks. Sigfund line is your playground. You can absolutely thrive in a heavy tank on this map by side scraping out the corners, by working carefully in the town. What the heavy tank engagement is about is making sure there are no punches. Because there are only a certain amount of passageways, a certain amount of corners that are occupied in this area. People don't generally watch this area. What happens with that? is that there's someone stationed here, there's a heavy tank garrison stationed here, if anyone works their way around this position, they will get spotted here, and they'll get killed by TD stationed out here, or out here, along with Artie, wherever he is positioned. So this area is a bottleneck, 
and not really used by the northern team to attack the southern team. However, these positions are the more populated areas, these passageways down the middle, and occasionally people work their way out into this position. However, for the northern team to work people down into there, it is very dangerous because this lunch line over the back here is prominent, people can hide down here behind it, big TDs often like to set up here waiting for people to come all the way down this line. The heavy tank engagement needs to be spread out. The idea of the heavy tanks on Sigfrund line is to block every passageway. If you are manning a heavy tank on Sigfrund line, look around you, see if one corner is not manned and if it isn't, man it. Go and sit yourself on that corner, make sure no one's moving, keep the enemy team locked down in order for the rest of your team, your light tanks and mediums to have the time that they need to make the play around the field to access the flanks. Just give them time, that is the idea of the heavy tanks. If you can whittle down the enemy team, then your, your lights and your mediums, even your TDs are going to feel more confident about making an aggressive manoeuvre. And that is the same on the other side too. You have your heavy tanks stationed, you have someone here, you have a t sneaky TD out here, you have some tank destroyers positioned on this hill, you have heavy tanks running about in these positions potentially. You don't often get many heavies in this area. The mediums are running about on these hills at the back just waiting for the opportunity or they're sat on here putting long range fire, occasionally get some mediums out here, but it's all a very compact engagement, which is why it's great for heavy tanks, because heavy tanks can slowly work their way through a massive amount of forces, and they've got constant cover while they do it. They can side up on the corner, put a shot out, bounce the return shot, then fall back behind cover, and they have constant support. One of the great things about Sigfrund Line is you're never alone in a heavy tank. You always have a load of support near you, so move with that support. Do not make an aggressive play on your own at the start in every kind of line, because if you do, if you move up to, say, this position, there's always going to be someone, somewhere, who can outflank you, put shots into your side, it's very easy to get caught out while making aggressive plays in this map. Move with your team. If you see a heavy tank moving up, then move into an alleyway to support him somewhere. There's always a way to do it on a front line. Just keep your head, keep calm, and move with your team. Slowly, aggressively pushing, making sure there's no breaches. Man the undermanned flanks, and you're going to do well in your heavy tanks. Do not go to the field. I'll just state that now, do not take a heavy into the field. The exceptions potentially are your French heavies, although all French heavies pretty much will have a massive side profile, so even this French line in the middle, you could not hide a French heavy tank behind. So, again, it's a good mission, do not get locked down in the field. If you are going to the field, play it aggressively, and hopefully have a platoon with you, or have some people that you are sure are going to support you. Potentially a tank you could take there is something like um, the WZ-11114 which is very really fast tier 9 Chinese heavy. Maybe something like the IS-8 but those are the only exceptions for heavies in the field I would say. Now tank destroyers I run into the same problem with medium tanks in that from one tank destroyer to another on the different nations they there's a massive amount of versatility. You get tank destroyers with lots of armor, you get tank destroyers with no armor at all, so talking about them as a whole is quite a difficult thing. Now, the TD playstyle generally is camp at the back, wait for the enemy team to come to you, which in fairness for Siegfried Line does work better than it does for other maps, because playing too aggressively will get you caught out and killed very quickly on this map. Now, judging by how obsolete the field position has become, I don't recommend taking your TD out into the field at all. My play with TDs, and this applies to pretty much any TD with a turret, because t tank destroyers, when you want to play them aggressively, it doesn't so much matter what armor they have. 
I play the Waffentrager Panzerfeuer, the tier 9 German TD with paper armor. I play that very aggressively. And the reason for that is because most TDs supplies generally off the board, most all across the board, most TDs will have better guns than the heavy tanks, than the mediums, than the light tanks of the same tier. And therefore when you're top tier or even when you're not, you're able to excel at shooting people. That is what TDs are about. It's about putting that gun to work. And the brilliant thing about six front line is that you can hide. You can hide behind your heavy tanks. People are going to be sideswiping around corners constantly. The enemy tanks are going to fire, and then as soon as they fire, you can pop out, slam the enemy with your massive, massive high penetration gun. You can take a load of damage off and then just hide. The enemy team have fired, there's nothing they can do about it. You can be a decent, aggressive support unit in a tank destroyer with a turret. Now, the reason for that is because obviously you can pull out from behind the corner and pull back in again very quickly without having to expose much of your tank to do it. Now, in a turretless TD, your armor matters a lot more. Generally, turretless TDs will have more armor than turretless TDs. That's generally how it works. So, a turretless TD you want to man long passageways. If, if there's no one at the back here, and you can see that not many people are manning this area, then generally you want to have at least one TD stationed out here, using this launch line for protection, in case anyone works their way down the north line. Now, as if that position is filled, I would recommend, if you want to protect the field in your TD, if you want to protect the field, then don't go to one of these bunkers all the way out in the field. Go to this bush position when you're spawning in the south. And when you're spawning in the north, hug this bunker. And the reason for that is because it's, it's the whole idea about committing. If you spend a long time relocating to the field and then the town falls, you're not going to be able to relocate to have influence in that key area of the flank, the flank that's losing. You're going to have to spend so much time going over there, you're either going to get caught out in the open or have to fall back. So, be as close to both flanks as possible. The middle of the map is probably the most important area for a TD. If you can get here, you can have influence on either side at any stage of the game. If you notice that the town is weakening or the town is pushing, then you can go with that, you don't have to go far. And you can cover the field if medium tanks make an aggressive play. This is a fantastic position for a talentless tank destroyer. And a talented tank destroyer. If you want to play more defensively with a talent, I, I, I work the town. I work a heavy tank engagement in my TDs. It's not for everyone, it depends entirely on your playstyle. But from the southern spawn, definitely working around here. Now, Northern Spawn does get a bit difficult. A lot of tank destroyer players camp up on this position, but that is becoming less and less effective because people are realising that there's very little point in pushing the Nort Line. And so, in a tank destroyer, it is potentially possible for you to work in these buildings around here. There's a lot more foliage than you appreciate when you look at the map from a bird's eye view. So if you work around this position, you can catch out people who are moving in the middle of the map without much many problems. TDs work at the back, they can wait for their team to fall or they can support the heavy tank engagement. And I recommend always supporting the heavy tanks in a TD, trying to support that crucial element of the game. It's one of the reasons why I discourage camping so much, purely because if you are camping in a TD, if you are wait waiting at the back behind one of these uh, bunkers, you're basically saying, I don't care if we lose 5, 10, 12 tanks. I don't care if the enemy team pushes the town because I want them to walk into my gun. And you're missing out. You are not contributing to that crucial stage of the game, where the game is won or lost. I always take part 
whether for better or for worse, I always take part in that stage of the game, where the enemy team breaks through. I'm not just waiting at the back for that to happen, because the best outcome, surprisingly, the best outcome is for that not to happen at all. If you can push through the enemy with your help, then that goes better for everyone. And so TDs, I recommend... Um, I recommend passive play for every class on this map, merely because the enemy team is so compact, but you can play TDs quite aggressively in the town, but pick someone, pick a heavy tank, stick by them, pop out between the new loads of the enemy, be a good support unit. As basically TDs, I would recommend one position uh, for the southern spawn, there is a way that you can engage the line down here while being in cover, and that's by using this punch line and this uh, tree ahead of you to conceal fire, and when people side scrape around the corner at the opposite end, you can put constant fire into them without actually getting spotted at a very close range indeed. Okay, an SPG. Um, I, there's a, actually a fantastic position for RT uh, on this map. It's here. Um, so yeah, if you can get to there, you're gonna have you're gonna make a great impact in the game. You're gonna just have uh, everyone will have a fantastic time if you get there. I can promise you that. I can see the stars and I am doing an anus. <laughs> Lol. Oh, come on! We got all the kills, guys. 15 kill game. Incoming! Okay, kill kill <laughs> oh, Dude! Well done. Well Dude! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.